Okay, so we started looking at voting power um, and weighted voting this week. Right. And we were starting to look at terminology and how to set up um, a, un um, a vote and how to read it of that system. And so maybe we're just gonna read through this really quickly. Um, there are some types of elections where voters do not all have the same amount of power. This happens often in business world where the power the voter possesses may be based on how many shares or stock he or she owns. So in this situation, one voter may control the equivalent of 100 votes where other voters only control 15 or 10 or even fewer votes. Therefore, the amount of power that each voter possesses is different. So another example is how the president of the United States is elected. And so we watched a video and I posted that link if you weren't here in class on Monday to watch that video, but we actually watched a couple of videos, one kind of going over what we had talked about um, the following couple of weeks with um, how to calculate votes when we all have the same weighted vote um, and the different methods and how the different results could happen with that. And, and then the next video went through and talked about electoral electoral votes and um, the presidential elections in the United States which kind of tied together exactly what we're getting into right now with voting power. So let me continue on reading. So when a person goes to a poll and casts a vote for the president, he or she is actually electing who will be, will go to the electoral college and represents um, that state by casting the actual vote for the president. Each state has a certain number of electoral college votes which is determined by the number of senators or number of representatives in Congress. Some states um, have more states have more power than others. How do we determine the power that each state possess? Okay, so just, um, yeah. I wish that personally for electoral votes, and I'm just gonna give you my maybe biased opinion, um, I don't like that the electoral votes all, you know, California, I think we heard that was 55. I don't like that all 55 goes to one candidate. So if we voted the majority, maybe 51% for one candidate and 49% of the other candidate, I think that maybe 49% of those electoral should go to, to that one and 51 to the other. But that's just my opinion. Um, maybe because I'm in a a state where it doesn't really matter who I vote for because majority goes usually the other way. Um, okay, so he or she is actually electing um, who will go to the electoral college and represents that state, okay. Um, each state has a certain number of electoral college votes which determine the numbers. Oh, yeah, we already read that, didn't we? Okay, sorry. So, Look at what we did last time. So remember people that have voting power, we call those them players. And we denoted players by capital P with a little subscript. And so it was P sub one that was representing player one. And we usually did players from the most weight down to the least weight. So player one is gonna have the most weight or most number of votes or equal to maybe to the second player but they, they have um, the maximum number of votes of everybody. Um, and so the weight is how much, how many votes they had. And um, we used Q for the quota and the quota was how many votes needed to be there to pass a motion. So in here, and I pulled this from a site says that the quota must be over half of the total votes and cannot be more than the total of um, weight. And so we were talking about quotas at the end of last class and what would make sense, what's the minimum number of quota that you could have. And we talked about, well, yeah, well, it wouldn't make sense to have zero quota because no one's voting and it passed. We said, yeah, well, we, I thought, you know, minimum we could have one. Um, but then if people have, you know, everybody has a weight who's voting, that would mean one person voted and not passed. So is that fair? 
So here for it to be fair, we're going to look at the quota must be over half. So to find um, half of the total weights. So you're going to find the total weight of everybody by going in and summing the weight of each player. So you're going to sum the weight of each player and divide that by two. So that was like the majority, right? We said um, to have over a majority, we had to have over 50%. So the quota has to be more than 50%, but less than or equal to. Well, it wouldn't make sense that if everybody voted that that quota was higher than that because, well, then it would, nothing would ever pass. So we have to sandwich that quota in between these two to be in what would be a, a consider maybe a fair voting. Okay, so we denoted the weighting system with those brackets, and then we saw a number, and that represented how much, how many votes needed to pass. And then we saw the list of numbers going down from largest to smallest, and those were the weights of the players in order. So let's look at an example. Okay, so we have a company. They have, um, has five shareholders. We have Ms. Lee has 30% ownership, Ms. Miller with 25%. Mr. Maddock has 22% ownership. Ms. Pierce has 14%, Mr. Hamilton at 9%. There is a motion to decide where best to invest their savings. The company bylaws define that the quota is 58%. So what should this voting system look like? Okay, so we need to figure out what the quota is. And we know it's 58%, but we need to figure out also what the total number of votes are. And so if we look at T as being the total number of votes, so let's look at this. We're looking at the weight of one player and we know that there's a five shareholders, so we're gonna have five different weights, plus the weight of second player, plus the weight of the third player, plus the weight of the fourth player, plus the weight of the fifth. And so going through, we can read off. So one has 30% ownership. So let's just weight that as 30. Um, one has, Mr. Miller is 25%, so plus 25. Matic, 22. Pierce is 14. And Hamilton is 9. Okay. So going through, I'm adding those up. 55, so 55 plus 22. That's 77, 77, 81, 91, 100. Which makes sense, right? Because if those were all the shareholders, we would think that that would add up to 100%. Um, but sometimes it's not percentage, percentages and shareholders, so it might not add up to 100. But that would tell me then that the quota, Q, is equal to 58%, so to take percent of something, rewrite it in decimal form, and multiply it by what you're taking the percent of, which is 100, 58% of 100 is, or 58% uh, of 100 is 58. And so to write out this voting system, the quote is 58, colon, and then going down, in the list from largest to smallest of the weight of the players, we have 30, 25, comma 25, comma 22, comma 14, comma 9. Okay, so we're talking about things being valid or not valid. Maybe someone was a dictator. They were one who could always um, make it so that it passed or didn't pass. We talked about people having veto power. Basically, if that person didn't come in and chime in, they, 
um, and it, they could make the, the motion not pass. They had veto power. Um, and we talked about the dummy. The dummy is a person who um, didn't have enough votes to do anything, to sway anything. And so if we look at this 854432, and we want to know is this, would this be a valid weighted voting system? Well, let's look at the total number of the weights. So if we look at the total weight, we have five plus four plus four plus three plus two. So nine plus four is 13 plus three is 16 plus two is 18. So it said to be fair that that quota, remember, needed to be between half of the total, or actually more than half the total, and less than the total weights. And so here, if we look at t divided by 2, this gives me 18 divided by 2, which is 9. So notice that our quota is less than. So Q was equal to eight, and this is less than. Um, half the total. Wait. Okay, so right there, probably not going to be fair um, because of this. And is anyone a dummy? So five plus four, they would win the, 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 just those two players would win. They would win. If we see what four plus four is eight, 10, 13, yeah. Okay, so not a good one. But looking at this, sometimes we want to look at the different weight. Like, what does this mean? Does really one person have more power than the other power? And so we can look at what different powers of these weights of these players to see, you know, what type they have and maybe is it fair or not. And so that's where we're going to jump into um, a way to look at the different weights of the players. I had a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so to answer that problem that we just did, um, since it's less than half the total weight, would that mean that it is not valid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, it would not be a valid voting system. Okay. So, yeah. So the next piece is a bonds off power. Okay. So bonds off powers, you got your players. We are still looking at this. And we say a coalition is a set of players that join forces to vote together. Okay, so maybe if we have in this case, it looks like we have three players here and player one and player two decide to vote for the motion, but player three does not. We would call player one and player three teaming up together as a coalition. So if there are three players, player one, two, and three, then the coalition will look like the following. So these would be the following ways that people could go and vote. So it's possible with three people voting that just player one votes for it. It's possible just player two, just player three. Okay, so there's one player coalitions. There are two player coalitions. So you would have to look at this and order doesn't matter in this case. Um, later on, we'll look at a power where order does matter. But in this case, order doesn't. So there's also two player coalitions. So that would be player one with player two, player one with player three, player two with player three. Those are all the ones that are possible. And then all of them could have voted. So a lot of times it's helpful 
um, sometimes it's not helpful because it's way too much work. If there's a lot of players, listing all the coalitions is going to become tedious. Um, but sometimes when there's not very many players, then it, it's, not, it's not too bad. So um, no, all of these coalitions are not necessarily winning coalitions. And if we want to find to see if a coalition is a winning coalition or not, all you're doing is you're summing the weight of each player that's in that coalition. And does that weight of the coalition meet that quota? If it does, it wins. If it doesn't, it doesn't win. Okay, so let's look at that. So let's say you had the following example. And you had the quota has to be met is 17. You're given that player one has a weight of 12 votes, player two has a weight of seven votes, and player three has a weight of three votes. So if player one just voted by themselves, that coalition, that weight right there is just 12. So if the, that coalition has just 12 votes, we know that the quota is 17. And so in this case, that would not pass the motion. So it would be a losing coalition. So player two. So notice that all of these are lower votes. So none of the single ones are gonna pass a coalition. But player two, if they voted alone, that um, coalition had a weight of seven. If player three voted alone, their weight was three. So let's look at if player one and player two decides to join up. So if player one and player two decides to um, do it, then that would be 12 plus seven, which is equal to 19. So 19 is bigger than the quota of 17. And so if those two players teamed up together, they could pass the motion. So now I look at what about player one and three. So if player one and three decided to get together. Well, player one brings the 12 votes plus player three brings the three votes. This is equal to 15 votes. So they don't, they wouldn't win that motion would not pass, it would be losing. So now if Bush player two and player three team up together, which I can tell won't work either because player two has less than player one, but writing out their weight, player two has seven votes plus player three has three votes. And so this is equal to 10 votes and that would be losing. And then the last one, player one, two, and three get together. They all vote for it. Well, hopefully that would pass. If not, that it's not fair. 12 plus seven plus three. So that would be 22. And so they would be a winning coalition. Okay, so when we're looking at this, we're trying to find um, the power that each player has in the voting system. And so this is helpful. You want to list out your coalitions or really all we want to know is what are the winning coalitions. Um, and so we want to list out the winning coalitions. If you look at this, we only have two winning coalitions, right? All the other ones, other com combinations would not pass that motion. So our winning coalitions would only be in this case if it was player one and two. And if it was all players together, player one, player two, and player three. Okay, so looking at this, um, and each of the winning coalitions, you will notice that there may be players or players 
that if they were to leave the coalition, the coalition would become a losing coalition. If such a player or players are known as um, critical players in the co coalition. So basically what that's saying is, look at our winning coalition. If you removed one of the players, so let's say if I remove player one from this coalition, would that coalition remain a winning coalition? No, because now they only have seven votes. That player one took away their 12 vote. Because if player one leaves, it would lose the co um, winning coalition. We say they're critical. They're critical to be here. In this case, player two. So player two, same idea. If this player two leaves this coalition of just player one and player two, that would just leave player one alone. Player one only has 12 votes and that is not enough to beat. And so they need to be there for that coalition to win. And so they're also a critical player. Okay, so we found the critical players for this winning coalition, player one, player two. We might want to list critical. And actually I was doing it there. So I just did it below here too. Um, so we could have done this. The weight of both of those together we found was 19, right? And we said the critical players in here was player one and player two. I tend to underline them when I do them. And then there was only one other winning coalition, player one, player two, and player three. We saw the weight of all of them together. That was the 22. Well, notice if we took away player one from this coalition, let's see, would it still win? So player two and player three, that's only the 12 votes and the seven votes. I'm not, sorry, player two and player three is only seven plus three, that's 10 votes. And so player one has to be in that coalition in order for those that to win. So player one is considered to be critical. So let's do the same thing now. Let's say so, we, so is player one considered to be critical because it has the highest number? No, so they're only critical if you remove them. So if I took them out of that coalition and only had player the rest of the players there, would that would that, um, would that win? And so if I took player one out who has 12 votes and I sum up player two and player three that's left, they only have 10 votes. So if that coalition won't pass with removing that player, um, then they're critical. And so if I remove player one, it doesn't pass. So that makes the, it a critical player for that coalition to win. Okay, so if it doesn't pass, it makes it critical? Right, so if it's still passed without that player in there, then they're not critical. Because they really didn't need that, that player. They could have won without them. So now like you do the same thing with player two. So from this coalition of three people, if you removed player two, now all we have is player one who has 12 votes and we have player th um, three, which has three votes. If I sum this up here, this is 15 votes, which is less than our quota. So this would not pass. So since it wouldn't pass, when we took player two out, that means they have to be a critical player. They, they need that player in there in order for that to win. And so then you go, you just keep going down the line and tell, ask yourself, if I remove this player, are they still going to win this coalition or not? So now let's look at player two. I'm sorry, player three. If I took player three out here, well, that would remain player one who had 12 votes. Plus that would remain player two, which had seven votes. If I sum that up, this is equal to 19. That's more than the quota. This is greater than the quota of 17. 
So notice that player three, they don't need player three in there. They're going to win anyways. So player three is not considered to be critical. So player three is not critical, a critical player. in the winning coalition. Um, and then there's a question, would P1 be a dictator? Let's look at that in a second. I'm just muting everybody for background noise. Um, so player three is not a critical player in the winning coalition because if we remove them, the coalition would still win. The coalition. will still win. Okay, so question was, does that mean that they're a dictator? Um, we know that we need, and, and I think that this might help us too, and let me actually go back to, to this. So a dictator um, is a player whose weight is bigger or equal to the quota. So is the, this person's weight bigger than or equal to this quota. So alone, they couldn't make it win, yeah. If alone they can make it win and they could also, they no one could win without them, they would be a dictator. Let's look at determining the power of each player and part of determining the power they have in that weighted voting system. The first thing you want to do is find all the winning coalitions. Then you're going to start looking at those winning coalitions and then you're going to go through and ask yourself if I just remove this one player, will it still win or not? If it doesn't win, um, they're critical. They need that player there to win. And so we, we mark them as a critical player. So once that's done, we are going to find what is called the Bonds-Off Power Index of each player. So what the Bonds-Off Power Index is, um, is one measure of power of players in a weighted voting system. In this index, a player's power is determined by the ratio of the number of times that the player is a um, critical to the total number of um, times any and all players are critical. So what is this saying? Basically, um, we need to list off how many times each player was a critical player in this whole thing. So let's look at player one. And they denote it for the bonds off index or bonds off power. Let me just see something. So bonds off index. Um, the book does it as B sub I or B sub one in here. This is going to equal the number of times they were a critical player. So looking at how many times that this player, player one was critical in these winning mo motions was two. So now we're going to go through for player two. So their power here is looking at this, the number of times they were critical in all the winning coalitions. If we count them up, there's two. Player three, we go in here and count how many times we need them in order to win a coalition. That was none. So T, which we need to look at because that's going to be our denominator, that is summing up 
all the times there was a critical player. So looking at all the number of critical players, even if they have had multiple times, you want to count them. So there's one, two, three, four times that there was a critical pay player determined. And so T is equal to four. The total number of critical players. So to get this bonsai, bonds off, bonsai, <laughs> to, get, <laughs> to get this bonds off power index, again, we're going to look at the player and we're going to look at this, this number of times that they were a critical player all over the number of times a critical player was listed. The in your book does this with a capital beta. So it's kind of a fancy kind of look and be. Kind of curls at the end, I guess. I don't know. I might not doing it right. But beta sub one, this is going to equal B sub one all over T. Well, we saw that player one had two critical um, or critical player twice out of four. So this is one half. The bonsai index of player two. Look at the number of times they were a critical player all over the total of times someone was critical, which was four. So this is one half. Where the bonsai power index for player three, That was B sub three, which is zero over four, which is zero. So really, even though player one, they might feel like they, they have a lot more weight than player two, they are really, ha it looks like with this, it's saying that they basically have the same weight in this weighting system. Look at that player three doesn't have any weight. They're not needed in any of those coalitions to win. All, um, so to me, that player is a dummy, dummy player or dummy variable. So the player with uh, zero, that would be the dummy player? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's not necessarily that there will be a dummy in, in there as a player, but that way, that player's a dummy, it doesn't matter. They're not going to either um, persuade something to win, their vote just doesn't matter. Because if they just decide to join, um, join up with player two, one, that's not going to happen. The player two, that's not going to happen. And taking them away from everything. So they really don't have any say in here. It might look good that you think, oh, I have votes in this, in this system. I have a say, but really they don't. Okay, okay but look at now, if we added one extra player in this system, look at all the different combinations that we're gonna have. So if there was one players, we'd have to look at the list at, and the, actually, sorry, copy pasting is not, did not, this is not as bad as it looks. Well, that doesn't work. You need to clean it anyway. Okay, so let me cross this out. We don't have to list this. Maybe, but no, actually, sorry. That's right. Okay, so again, look at how many players we have. So um, possible just one player coalition. So that's if just each player voted by themselves. Um, if two player coalitions, there would be six different possibility, three players um, voting together. This is all the possibility. And then if four players vote together, it's just 
one way to do that. So if we count how many there are in here, right? There's one plus six is seven, seven plus four is 11. Did I count that wrong? Plus one. Oh no, yeah, fours, sorry, four plus six is 10, plus four is 14, plus one is 15. I was counting this as one, but there's four different way, things. So when there are four players, it turns out there's 15 coalitions. If you even look at it when there's five players, there are going to be 31 coalitions. So let's think about this. So it doesn't um, look like there is a pattern to the number of coalitions until you realize there's seven coalitions with three, there's 15 with four, 31 with five. And notice these are all one less than the power of two. So three players is two cubed minus one, which is two cubed is 16 minus one, which is 15. I think I'm missing a number here. Okay, so to figure out how many coalitions you want to list, if you wanted to list all of them, you'd have to look at 2 raised to the nth power minus 1. Okay, so let's look at the following. And so in this case, I noticed that I have five players. I really, 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 really do not want to go through and look at two to the fifth minus one, which would be two, to the fifth is just two multiplied by itself five times, which if you do that, you'll get 32 minus one, which is 31. So let's just think about it a little bit with some logic. Let's look at it. Would anybody, if they went to vote and they voted by themselves, would that be a winning coalition? So notice they're not going to win. Player one, they have 30 votes by themselves. They wouldn't win. Everybody else below them would be, wouldn't win. So now let's go to the most high um, number of votes that would could happen if there was two players. So player one and player two. If we matched up player one and player two together, that gives me 55 votes. So 55 votes, that's less than this 58, which is my quota. So since they both have the highest number of votes, there's no other two combinations that would give me 58 or higher. So now we have to go down and we have to look at three combinations. So let's start listing it. So player one, player two, player three. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so we got coalition, player one, player two, and player three. So let's add up their, their weight. And their weight together is, I'm just gonna do it under. So we have 30 plus 25 plus 22. So that's 55 plus 22 is 77. Okay, so that's a winning coalition. And we're gonna list the critical players. So if we had decided to take out player one, well, we know no two player coalitions would win. So if we took out player one, then player, um, this, these two remaining players wouldn't win the coalition. And so player one is considered critical. But same sort of idea with player two. If we took player two out of this coalition, well, that would make a two player coalition, which we determined wasn't gonna be a winning coalition. So player two needs to be in there. 
exactly the same thing with player story. So all three of those are, are critical. And so now let's look at another three player coalition. So I'm going to go down the list with just player one. So let's look at player one. Let's exclude player two for now um, and do player three and player four. I'm going to erase this in a minute if this isn't winning. So player one is 30 votes plus player three, which is 22 votes plus player four, which is 14 votes. So this is 52, 52 plus 14 is, um, is 66. Okay, so they are a winning coalition. And again, if we remove one player from that coalition, it's not going to work. Oops. Sorry, I didn't list this right. So player one is, is would be critical. Player three in this case would be critical. And player four in this case would be critical. I probably should have done this with just player one, player two, with all the other ones first, but that's okay. Um, let's continue. So I'm keeping player one in there. Um, let's do player one, player two. We already did player three and player four. So player one is 30. This can come a little tedious, like I'm. I'm Player two is 25 and player four was 14. So 55 plus 14 is 69 winning. Player one, player two, and player four. And then player one, who else can we do? Player one. So are they all considered critical because they're over 58? Um, they're all consider critical because no one two person coalition would ever win and so if you took one player out of this of the coalition then that would lose and so each player in a three player coalition um, is always going to be a critical player because if you remove them it now becomes a losing coalition okay so the, the, and you have to list all the three player coalitions that could win. And in each case that we do this, every player um, so, um, is going to be a critical player if it's a three player. Once we get into four player, that's not going to be necessarily the case. So if you have player one in here, um, player two, I need to go all the way down the line, player five. Let's see if that's winning. So player one is 30, plus player two is still 25. Player five has nine. So 30 plus 25, that's 55. 55 plus nine is 64. That's bigger than 58, it's winning. And so any player that's in that coalition, if we removed them, would cause that to then be a losing coalition. That's a piece of five. And so we need them. And so they're critical to that coalition. So we went through all the list of P1, um, P2. So now let's go down the list of P1 and P3. Well, we started that with P1, P3, and P4. Let's look at P1, P3, and P5.
lose up colors. So P1, let's see if that's winning. So P1 plus um, P2, not P2, P3 and P5. So 30 votes, P sub three is 22 votes and P sub five was nine votes. So this is 52 plus one is 61. That's a winning coalition. Any player that you remove, so P1, P3, or P5, those are all critical. So we've looked at all the combination with P1, P3. Um, now let's look at the, all the combinations with P1, P4. Well, P1, P4, P3 we've done, P1, P4, P2 we've done, P1, P4, and P5 we need to do. So P1 is 30, P4 is 14, and P5 is 9. So that's 44 plus 9 is 53. This is actually a losing coalition. It doesn't meet the quota. So if we did any other three combination, let's exclude player one now, could it win? So if we now look at let me go over here and do it. So let's look at player two. So player two, um, player three, and player four. So player three, sorry, player two, getting rid of them, is 25, plus player three is 22, plus player four is 14. So summing this together, 25 plus 22, that is 47, 47, um, 51, 61, that's 61. And so everybody is a critical player because if you removed any one of them, they would dis um, that coalition wouldn't win. So let's look at P2, P3, P5 and see if that's also winning. So that's 25 plus 22 plus nine. So that's what, 47 plus nine is 56. So this is not winning. So if we took out this there's no other combinations then with player two, or we actually just wrote them down. But if we did without player two and did player three, player four, player five with that win, well, 22 plus 14, that's 36. 36 plus nine is not gonna get me 58. So that is not a winning coalition either. So we've listed all the three player coalitions that are possible and that could win. So I'm going to go through and down and I'm just going to go erase the ones that didn't win in there to give us more room. So yell if you don't want me to erase it. Here we go. So now we had to go through and look at the four people coalition. Um, four people coalition. Well, um, let's just do the list P1, P2, P3, and P4. So if we remove player one, would this coalition still win? Does P2, P3, P4, can they win it? Well, we've already listed all the winning coalitions above, 
And so we can look at that. So notice P2, P3, P4 here. They still win this coalition. They still have 61 points. And so P sub 1 is not a, a critical player. Same idea. I mean, P sub 1 has the most number of points. So if I get rid of their 30 points or less than 30 points and removed a player, they're still not going to make any of this. So P1, P2, P3, P4, this is a coalition that doesn't have any critical players. It's going to win if we remove one of those players. Um, P1. P2, P3, P5. Again, that's a winning coalition, but are any of those critical? Well, let's look. Would this coalition right here, if we took out player one, would that win? Do we have a winning coalition up here with three players that have two, three, and five? Well, we have two, three, and four, one, three, and five, not that is critical, we can test it. If we took out player one, this would have 25 plus player three, which was 22, plus player five, which was nine. Uh, nine. So this is 47 plus nine, so that's 56. That is losing the coalition. That makes player one critical. They have to stay in there for that coalition to win. So we want to do the same thing now. Let's so instead, let's see, is player two critical? So player two had 25 points. Let's just exclude that from here. And so that's 30 um, plus 22, that's 52. 52 plus nine, that's 61 points. Taken away player two, that's still a winning coalition. And so that makes player two not critical. And if we removed any other player after them, they have less votes, so they're not gonna change it. So we have one critical player in that winning coalition. Okay, so let's look at, I think we've looked at all the combos. Scroll down, which way? This way? Okay, so we need to think of all the four different combinations, unfortunately. And so let's look at, we've already looked at P sub one always being in there. So let's look at with P sub two. So if we join P2, P3, P4, and P5. So adding those together, um, we have 25, 22, plus 22. Piece of four is 14. Piece of five is nine. Let's first make sure this is winning. So that's 47, 51, 61. I believe that's 70 points. And so this is a winning coalition. If we removed player two, let's see if they still would win. So if I got rid of this 25 and I summed up the points of the other one, so 22 plus 14 is 36, 36 plus nine is 45, they would, would lose. So player two in this case is critical. So let's say we kept player two in there, but instead we took out player Three. So instead we have 25 plus 14, that's 39, 39 plus four. 39 plus four is not enough. And so we need player three. So let's put player three back in and check out if player four is critical. So if we took out their 14 votes, we'd have 47 plus 9 is 56. 
56 is not big enough. And so they would not win. We need player four in there. So put player four back in there. And let's take out player five. So 47 plus 14 is big enough, 61. And so player five is not critical. So I believe we've done all the four combinations with piece of two. Um, do we have any other ones? I don't think so. P3, P4, P5, P1, did we do that? Maybe not. P3, let's try it. P1, P3. I just don't think that that was a winning one. Okay, the last one we have is five people are playing, five people playing. Player one, player two, player three, player four, and player five. We know if all people vote together, this would win. If we play, pulled out player one, that would be the last four, two, three, four, five. Notice two, three, four, five, one. So they don't need player one, they could still win the coalition. Basically removing the person with the most number of votes is um, the coalition is still winning. So it wouldn't matter if we got rid of any of those. Okay, so we wanna go through Let's look at player one and let's look at how many votes that they got. So player one, um, Bonsai Index was, we have to count how many times they were critical. One, two, three, four, five, six, Aussie six. Then do the same thing, go through with player two. And so player two, we're looking at how many times they're critical. So player two. So we got one here, two, three, four, and then up here, five. Player three. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Player four. Now one, two, three, four. And then last, player five. Player five, we got one of them here. One, two, two. So if I went through and counted how many um, critical players total, well, that should be summing all these up. So if I summed all these critical players up, that six plus five is 11, plus five is 16, plus four is 20, plus two is 22. Okay, so the bonsai index So bonsai index for player one 
they got 6 over 22, which is 6 over 22 reduce your fraction. So that's going to be 3 over 11. See if they want you to put your answer when you're doing it in, um, in decimal form or fraction. And so this is approximately it. And if they say decimal form, round, see what, where they want you to round to. So approximately 0 0.27 or 27% of the power. So player two, their bonsai index is going to be the same as player three because they both had the same number of critical. Um, they were a critical player the same number of times. So five all over 22. That doesn't reduce. And that gives us approximately 23%. So the bonsai index of player three is five over 22 or approximately 23%. Bonsai power of player four, well, they only had four times they were critical. So four over 22 reduces to, both of them have two in common, two goes into four twice, two goes into 22 11 times. So two divided by um, 11, that gives us approximately 18%. And then the bonsai power for player five, which is two over 22, which is one over 11. which is approximately 9% or 0 0.09. Okay, so it kind of gives you a better distribution of how powerful really those players are um, in this voting system. Any questions? I have a question. Um, so when you're adding all the players up, are you just adding all of them up and taking and removing one of the players? Yeah, so once I've added the players that are in the coalition up and, and they beat this quota, I left them up here because that may, meant they were winning. And then you're right. So I just went through and I just eliminated one of their weights to see it, would it still be weighted or would they still win? And if they, if they still won without that player, they, didn't, they weren't critical. They didn't need that player. But if they didn't win when you remove that one player from that coalition, and they, um, that means they were critical for that coalition to win. So you list them. Okay. Yeah, so it's, this is where it could get very tedious if you had a lot of players going on there and had weights. And list them yeah, yeah, that's why I was asking if this is how we're going to have to list it out. So it's not, you would have to do this, but it's not going to be as tedious. Um, you probably, I wouldn't, if I gave it to you on an exam, I wouldn't give it to you like this. I might be helpful. I can give you guys a list of um, having these already listed for you. These coalitions could have been a lot faster if they were already on like a, a sheet of all the possible, and I, maybe I should have pulled this down. Because we could have quickly went through and, you know, crossed the ones that didn't work. Actually, that's not five players, though. That was just four players. But if I had a list like this in front of me with the, all the possibilities for five players, I can do some reasoning really quick to cross them out, and it wouldn't be as long. But I was going through thinking, oh, did I miss one? You know, all the different combinations. So if I had a bigger list like that on an exam or something, I would give you all the possible coalitions and you would just have to go through and, and decide, is that coalition winning or not? If so, you know, move it over and we're gonna have to look at each player individually. Let's 
Let's see if I don't know if I have another example in here or not. But if not, I could possibly pull one from the book. It doesn't look like it, which is fine. I don't want to jump into the next section. Definitely don't have time for that, but let me pull one more problem from this section. So what section was this? So this one is 2.2. Okay. And so this is on the bonds off power and calculating. Okay, so this is, <laughs> these are going to be a little bit simpler, a little faster, but maybe it will, um, will clarify some of the stuff. And we only have 10 minutes left, a little less than 10 minutes. So let me look at this. So we're doing, consider the following voting system. So let's say Q, um, we're given seven comma five comma three. Okay, so we got three players in there. Part A is asking, what is the weight of the coalition formed by P sub one and P sub three? So what is the weight of the coalition formed by player one and three? Well, all we have to do is go in here. We know this is the weight of player one. This is the weight of player two. And this would be the weight of player three. And so if we summed and the coalition we would write would be P1 comma P sub three. And the weight of this would be the seven plus three. So that would be 10. B, so for what values of the quota Q is the coalition formed by P2, P3, and P4 a winning coalition? Okay, so for what value Q? Is P sub one, I'm sorry, is P sub two, P sub three, P sub four. P sub two, P sub three, P sub four. A winning coalition. Well, we need to figure out what the weight of all three of those together is. And we know that the quota has to be at least that. Okay, so let's look at weight of two plus the weight of three plus the weight of four. How's that possible? I'm sorry. I'm reading, <laughs> I'm reading question 12 with four players. Sorry, I'm a little slow right now. We only have three players. Um, let me go back up to where the question I was looking at before. Um, so for what values Q is a coalition formed by P sub one, P of three, P one, P three. So let me just erase that. A winning coalition. So weight one and weight three, sum it together. Well, we, we already did that up here. That was 10. So we know that has to be um, 10 or higher. Q has to be bigger than 10. Bigger than or equal to 10. So for what value of the quota Q is the coalition formed um, by P1 and P3 a losing coalition? So P1, and P3 basically is going to be losing if it's less than 10. It's a losing coalition.
if Q is less. Wait, um, P sub one, P sub three is a losing coalition if their weights is less. Let me just rewrite it, sorry. For what values of quota Q is a coalition formed by P sub one, P sub three, a losing coalition? And I actually got this, this wrong. Above P1, P3 is gonna win as long as it's smaller than or equal to 10, right? Because they have 10 and if this was smaller, the quota was smaller, they would have more than that. P1, P3, well, they need, they have 10. So anything higher than 10 would make that a um, losing coalition. Okay, so that's a good spot to stop. Let me just pause it.